Now, earlier this year, when we were getting all giddy for Ryzen, I know I was grinning from ear to ear like a buffoon, rumours started to surface regarding a counter from Intel. We knew that Ryzen was going to offer 6-core and 8-core CPUs for the mainstream, and it was unlikely that Intel's existing quad cores would be able to compete. Admittedly, though, the 7600K and 7700K do still look quite mighty, at least for gaming, but their time in the sun is no doubt limited. Anyway, the rumoured processors were from the KB Lake X lineup, and they were none too exciting. The Core i5-7640X looked to be pretty much a renamed 7600K, while the Core i7-7740X was pretty much a renamed 7700K. These new X series processors were a bit confusing. It was suggested that the 7640X could possibly inherit hyperthreading support, essentially making it a Core i7, and the 7740X could be upgraded with six cores. Those upgrades didn't seem particularly likely to me though, but it also didn't seem likely that Intel would simply just release their existing mainstream CPUs on their high-end desktop platform. After all, what would that achieve, and how would this in any way be a counter to Ryzen? Well, that's exactly what they've done. Repackage the KB Lake 7600K and 7700K as KB Lake X parts and call it a day. On paper, you'll see that the KB Lake X parts come with a very mild factory overclock and sport a higher TDP rating as a result. Pricing remains the same, though overall cost is dramatically increased thanks to the more expensive X299 platform. It's hard to imagine why anyone would spend twice as much on an X299 board for these quad-core CPUs when they could simply get all the same features and capabilities in a Z270 board for half the price. Not only that, but half the features don't actually work on the X299 boards when using KB Lake X CPUs, as they lack the required amount of PCI Express lanes and only support dual-channel memory. Anyway, all this mess aside for now, how does the Core i5-7640X and Core i7-7740X perform, and are they faster than the mainstream KB Lake options? Well, let's go find out. As I just mentioned, the KB Lake X CPUs still only feature a dual-channel memory controller, unlike the Skylake X parts, such as the 7800X, which do boast quad-channel memory support. What this means is, we see the same 31GB per second of memory bandwidth when running DDR4-3200, as we did with the 7700K and 7600K. Moving on, we have the Cinebench R15 results, and well, I can't say the numbers here are at all surprising. That said, despite their slight frequency advantage, the 7740X and 7640X are both only able to match the scores of their LGA1151 versions. At this point, we pretty much know everything we need to know, but what the hell, I've run a heap more benchmarks so we might as well check them out, and admittedly there are some slightly interesting numbers here anyway. Take the 7-zip figures for example, the 7740X does manage to pull ahead of the 7700K, though the same can't be said for the 7640X versus the 7600K. This time the 7740X was only able to match the 7700K in our Excel test, while the 7640X actually falls behind the 7600K. Moving to the PC Mark 10 Essentials benchmark, the older mainstream KB Lake parts provide the best results here, narrowly outscoring the newer KB Lake X models, so, this is a very disappointing result for Intel's new high-end performance quad-core processors. Again, the 7700K and 7600K were able to outscore the 7740X and 7640X, this time by a quite convincing margin in the productivity tests. Something very odd is going on here. The 7740X and 7640X were much slower for the photo editing test. Not sure what's going on here, these results don't really make sense but I can assure you I did double check them. Finally, the last PC Mark 10 test, and this time we're looking at video editing performance, and here the older KB Lake CPUs again knock off the 7740X and 7640X, though only by a slim margin this time. The Corona benchmark also favours the 77K and 7600K by a slim margin. We also see the same thing in the Blender test, the 7700K and 7600K were clearly faster. I ran this test three times on each CPU after a full system reset each time, and the LGA 1151 CPUs came out on top each time. Again, we see much the same in Handbrake. The 7700K and 7740X were much the same, though the 7600K did pull ahead of the 7640X. The last application we're going to look at is Premiere Pro CC, and again, the mainstream KB Lake parts delivered the best results. We saw how the 7740X and 7640X struggled in the application tests, and here we see much the same in our first gaming benchmark using Battlefield 1. The 7700K was 5% faster than the 7740X when looking at the minimum frame rate, and that's a decent margin. Much the same we're seeing when comparing the Core i5 CPUs. 
Again, this time when testing with Mafia 3, we see that the mainstream Core i7 and Core i5 CPUs provide the best results. The Hitman performance was very similar, and the KB Lake X and KB Lake CPUs traded blows here. The same is true for Ashes of the Singularity, as performance was much the same on either platform. Now, if you thought KB Lake X looked pretty ordinary so far, things are about to get a lot worse. For no added performance, in fact, more often than not, we saw a reasonable decline in performance. The KB Lake X CPUs consume between 15 and 20% more power under load in our Excel test. Perhaps worse still, at idle, the X299 platform can be seen consuming almost 20% more power at idle. That's just horrible. But wait, there's more terrible news for would-be KB Lake X buyers. Here we see, under extended periods of load, the 7740X and 7640X consume over 40% more power. What? Okay, let's wrap up this mess. Okay, so going into this review, we already knew that KB Lake X wasn't really going to be any good. Uh, in fact, quite the opposite. This was mostly down to the fact that these quad-core CPUs really have no place on the high-end desktop platform. Uh, no less one they can't actually fully drive. However, adding insult to injury is the weaker performance and increased power consumption. The performance issues could easily be blamed on the X299 board that we used. After all, the motherboard manufacturers do seem as though they're being used as a bit of a scapegoat for this messy release by Intel. That said though, the ASRock X299 Tai Chi that we used was absolutely flawless when testing the higher end 7800X, 7820X and 7900X CPUs. Even so, I did a bit of looking around to see what others found. The slightly weaker performance seems to be a platform issue as other reviewers, using a varying range of hardware, found the same mixed results as me, with KB Lake X being slower for the most part. The confusing power consumption figures that I found certainly haven't been seen by all. In fact, Private Clock has found the 7740X to consume 15% less power than the 7700K when comparing total system consumption. They use the ASUS Prime X299 Deluxe motherboard, for those wondering. Meanwhile, LAN OC found the 7700K and 7740X to consume roughly the same amount of power under load, though at idle the 7740X was 16% hungrier, and again they used the ASUS Prime X299 Deluxe. So already, two reviews that are quite conflicted. Then lastly, I'll mention the Vortez review, which found similar numbers to me. Under load, the 7740X system ate up 35% more power than the 7700K, and they used the Gigabyte Aorus X299 Gaming 3. So blame it on KB Lake X, the Rush platform in general, or perhaps just the different testing methods used by reviewers. Anyway, we all seem to agree that overall KB Lake X is actually slower than KB Lake, and that's obviously very bad. In the end, the Core i7-7740X and Core i5-7640X make absolutely no sense. I can't think of one good reason why they exist. Honestly, what was Intel thinking? Wrapping things up, I'll quote myself from my Intel Core X vs AMD Threadripper video published at the start of Computex. Perhaps even more puzzling is the $240 Core i5-7740X, which is another quad-core part, though it lacks hyper-threading support, so just four threads are on offer here. So, for $20 more than the Ryzen 5 1600, Intel's giving us a traditional Core i5. I won't bother reading out the specs for this one, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a waste of your time, kind of like another Core i3 7350K situation. I'll pretty much simply tell you guys, don't buy it. And here we are, five weeks later, and I'm telling you guys not to buy a KB Lake X CPU. Who saw that coming? Anyway, I'm glad to have this one out of the way and off my chest. I'm done with it. I'm not going to bother overclocking these chips, deleting them or anything like that. They simply shouldn't exist. Uh, you shouldn't buy them. And so that information really shouldn't be relevant. Next up for the Core X series, I do plan to compare the Core i7 7700K head to head with the 6 core Core i7 7800X to see if it's worth spending that little bit extra on the more high-end part. And of course, you do get those extra cores. And for that comparison, I will be comparing them overclocked as well as stock. And when it comes to the value aspect, I will be taking the entire platform cost into consideration for that battle. After that, I'll be updating my Ryzen gaming results and comparing them with the equivalent Intel CPUs. So stay tuned for that. Also, if you liked the video, please take a moment to hit the like button. That really helps us out. And subscribe if you haven't already and hit that little notification bell so you will be notified of our videos as they go live. I'm your host, Steve. See you again soon, guys.